Welcome once again to Spotlight in the River. I'm Freddie Woolfolk. And I'm Gregory Simpson. And we have our guest. Leroy Smith. Welcome, Will Leroy. Glad to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. And we, we hopefully today, once we finish with this show, people will see how Spotlight in the River has dedicated his its time, its energy, toward bringing in individuals, organizations, to show just how we have resources right beneath our nose yes. that we don't know about. Uh, now, I must say, that as, a, as a disclaimer, that this particular program we are talking about today, uh, the course program, C-O-R-S-E, did not misspell it, it's correct, C-O-R-S-E, is a grant-funded uh, initiative, correct? That is correct. Okay, so I want to make sure from the onset, mm -hmm. so if we, if we were to get this grant, these are some things that we are proactively uh, trying to put in place now because we feel very confident that that grant may come through for us, correct? Yes, we okay. do. We're pretty confident. Okay, with that, I'm, I'm going to just, just yield right now. Just, just uh, I'm sure quite a few people in Indian River County know you, but just reintroduce yourself once again to the, to the viewing audience. Okay, my name is Leroy Smith. I'm a retired uh, lieutenant from the Indian River County Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office and has since been reemployed as a community liaison background investigator. I'm a, a lifelong resident of Indian River County, born and raised here. I'm married to Sheila, and uh, we have three children, Jesse, Priscilla, and William. And we're here to talk about this uh, initiative that is being sponsored by the Indian River County Sheriff's Office, which is the course program. Mm -hmm. Break that down for me a little bit. That was a long time, a community liaison background investigator. Yeah, that's my current title. Okay. I, 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 uh, I'm doing background investiga investigations for um, and also assisting with the recruitment mm -hmm. over in Human Resource with the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. And I'm also, I attend community meetings as a community liaison person sponsoring programs such mm -hmm. as this. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that we have additional initiatives in addition to this in the very near future. Well, great, great. So, so you see you have, a, you have an exciting job, you know, because uh, it's sort of like my job, and I'm sure like Greg's jobs too. Mm -hmm. uh, new things come up that that really challenge you, but you, after you accomplish it, you feel so good about yes, it. You say, well, say yeah. "Wow, we got that one done." <laughs> yes, so, but right. I but I want to I want to just just revert back to a conversation that really uh, led to you coming to the show today, and we were just talking about uh, how the, the the makeup of the county has so many Hispanics, so many Blacks, so many Whites, so many Asians, so many other nationalities, mm -hmm. and how important. It is that the sheriff department uh, mirrors that type of makeup. Is that correct? That's absolutely co uh, correct. Uh, you know, our agency, the Indian River County Sheriff's Office, uh, this is a proactive approach. This, po this course program is it, an additional attempt. Now, let me let me back up. The sheriff's mm -hmm. department already meet the federal uh, guidelines when it comes to uh, the, the demographics when, within the workforce. If you mm -hmm. if you take corrections and law enforcement mm -hmm. and combine them. We meet the federal guidelines, the requirements based on the federal government. But this is a, a, a proactive program to further that initiative. Uh, the sheriff um, allowed uh, Amber Greer to mm -hmm. apply for this grant, and the purpose of this grant is to create a workforce, law enforcement mm -hmm. specific, mm -hmm. that is reflective of the demographic it serves. And with Indian River County being 85 percent, approximately 85 mm -hmm. percent white, uh, seven percent uh, African American, and I think is eight. Don't quote me on mm -hmm. that. Eight percent Hispanic. Okay. Uh, this is a this is an attempt to have our law enforcement be reflective of those demographics. So, okay. I, and in my opinion, I think is very beneficial okay. for our agency to have a workforce that is reflective of the demographic itself. I want to talk more about that when we come back. We're going to take a Absolutely. station break. We have to go pay the bills and All once right. we come back, we're going to take a station break. We're going to come back and talk more with, with uh, Officer Smith about this great initiative. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. 
ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com or call 772-777-1382. We're back once again talking to Mr. Leroy Smith, and he's a uh, community liaison background investigator with the Indian River County Sheriff Department. And we were talking about the breakdown of Indian River County, roughly in approximations, 85% white, 7% black, 8% uh, Hispanic, and others. Uh, that gives you a, a little snapshot view of what the sheriff is trying to do through his hiring practices. And I'm glad you made a, a point of clarity when you mentioned that this particular uh, course is not a, anything new. You are already doing that at the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. He's already satisfied and, and, and taken care of meeting the hiring requirements as far as diversity in, right. in the ranks. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you made that assumption that no, we're not doing anything reactive. We're doing something proactive, exactly. uh, yes. which, which is different. But here, I want you to talk a little bit more about the C-O-R-S-E, course. Mm -hmm. And it's an acronym, sure, but kind of break that down. What does course mean? What, what's, what's the wordage that go with that? It's the Community Rep, uh, Recommended Sponsorship Employment Program. Mm -hmm. That's the acronym. The acronym stands for that. Community mm -hmm. Recommended Sponsorship Employment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll explain how it works if you want me to. You. Okay. Go, go right oh, ahead. Please, go mm -hmm. by okay. all means. Yes. It's the Community Recommended uh, uh, Sponsorship uh, Employment Program. And the way it works is that We've applied for a grant through the, through the Department of Justice. They have what they call Cops More Grants, and this is a Cops More Grant. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of this program is to have money available to entities like the Sheriff's Office to go out into, to, first of all, they go out and you get recommended groups, groups like the uh, COPE program, which mm -hmm. is a community-oriented mm -hmm. police enforcement program, mm -hmm. the GIF of Progressive Civic League, uh, certain Hispanic groups that are mm -hmm. in place, um, NAACP, the mm -hmm. Minister's Council, those are, the, those are examples of rec, uh, recognized groups. Those groups go out into the community and they get individuals from the community that they think would serve their community well in law enforcement or public wow. service. Mm -hmm. And they bring that individual forward and they present this person to the sheriff and the sheriff impanels a board and that board will interview this individual. Oh. Okay. Now, when they finish in interviewing this individual, if they meet the agency requirements, the sheriff agrees to hire this person at 75% of a beginner's deputy salary and pay them while they go to, to the uh, police academy. And the sheriff also absorbs the cost of the police academy. He pays for them to go through the police academy. They have to complete and pass a uh, police academy. Upon passing that, then they have to pass the state exam. Once they pass the state exam, then the sheriff will hire them as mm -hmm. a deputy. Now they must, at that point, they sign a two-year agreement when they complete the police academy and pass the state exam. They sign a two-year agreement with the sheriff's office to stay with that agency for two years. Now it is incumbent upon that candidate to complete the FTO program. If they complete the FTO program, and then they will, will remain with that agency for two years. And if they choose to leave, they can leave. But uh, that person must stay with the agency for two years and also that person will work in that community that they were selected from. Oh. And what's the FTO program? Mm -hmm. The Field Training Officer Program. Okay. That's a program that's in place within the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. If I forget to uh, explain the acronym, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you, you're so used to saying that. <laughs> it's second nature, right? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. No well, great. That, that explains a lot about this program and, and we're going to take a break and come back and talk a little bit more about it because we feel that there's some individuals out there who qualify who may not know about this information and hopefully they'll watch to show and uh, begin to pursue this, this opportunity. So we're going to take a station break and we're going to come right back after these messages. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. 
Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach Monday through Saturday for all of your furniture needs. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics in downtown Vero Beach. Owner Patty Callahan prints it all from color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. How can I become a sheriff officer? Is there any opportunities for me to become a sheriff officer? Can I, as a minority, become a sheriff officer? Yes, 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 yes. And we have uh, Officer Leroy Smith here today who's going to continue to share, share with us uh, why they're doing what they're doing. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not that minorities are not employed already with the Indian River County Sheriff Department, they are. But there's, there's a certain segment that is more populated. And when you take an average, it seems like everything is, is spread across the board as far as positions. Is correct? Right. Okay. Right. Explain that for me. Within the Indian River County Sheriff's Office, like I stated at the outset, uh, the agency already meet the federal guidelines, uh, mm -hmm. the federal federal requirements when it comes to their hiring practices. If you, like I stated, if you take corrections along with law enforcement mm -hmm. and bring everything together, uh, we exceed the re uh, federal requirements because I think it's more like thirty something, thirty seven percent of our workforce is of color mm -hmm. or some other uh, underrepresented class right. when you look at law enforcement. But this course program focuses specifically on law enforcement. Uh, within the history of Indian River County, we have had only one black female employed with our agency in the law enforcement segment of that agency. When you say the law enforcement, are you really referring to road deputies? I'm, in, I'm referring to sworn law enforcement officers. Okay. See, the corrections is a separate academy. Correction, uh, so correctional okay. officers go through a separate academy. Law enforcement officers graduate from a separate academy. Wow. Okay, so I learned two something today. <laughs> two separate entities. Okay. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, the law enforcement academy is over 800 hours long. Corrections is like 420. Okay. Okay. So when you look at law enforcement, we've only had one African-American female mm -hmm. hired with Within that agency and this course program is a program that's put in place to try to rectify that issue we're gonna we're actively recruiting african-american females hispanic females and the black male those are the underrepresented class based on the course program and when we look at our law enforcement demographic okay? well wow, that's amazing see that hits home with me because my mother is a retired sheriff deputy road patrol mm -hmm. and of uh, st louis county she was only the second african-american female mm -hmm. to even be even push a sheriff car, as they say, um, in St. Lucie County. Mm -hmm. So I understand the importance of having that level of diversity, especially with the female population. Mm -hmm. Now, I was in Hillsborough County because my family also own a Bells Bonds business, and they stated that clear across the United States, there seemed to be a decrease in individuals wanting to be a police officer. Are you all also experiencing this issue here in Indian River County? Yes. A decrease in individuals? Could you explain, could you explain that for me, please? Well, we, we are experiencing a decrease in African Americans submitting applications to become law enforcement. We're not getting applications. We're, we're getting applications, but in the run of a 90-day period, we may receive two for law enforcement purposes. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so that's something that uh, I'm actively trying to rectify, and the sheriff uh, put me over in human resource um, to try to help rectify that. We are, re we are actively recruiting the, uh, the underrepresented classes to submit applications. Not guaranteeing you a job, but submit the application so at least we can you can be considered for employment. Mm -hmm. right. Now, in these applications that come in, you mentioned there's 800 on one side is uh, as far as hours or 400. The the, the okay. academy, okay. The law enforcement academy is 800 plus hours, okay. and the corrections academy is approximately 420. Does that have any type of bearings? A person said, "Well, I rather just do the 400 hour. I get the same pay uh, if I'm over here as over there." That may. Mm. That 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 may <laughs> that very well may. Okay. Yeah. Now just just uh, in your presentation, I heard you say that, that a lot of people want to migrate toward the correction correction side, side right. and I can get the same pay. And 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 in their mind, it may feel it's less strenuous. I don't know, or whatever that may be. You make a very good point. And okay. I can only assume, assume. why they would 
uh, gravitate to one or the other. Okay. You know, but I mean, personally, I like law enforcement. I spent 29 mm -hmm. years in that career, and I was moderate, somewhat successful in mm -hmm. my career, mm -hmm. and I'm doing it uh, the second time. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead. We're going to take a break, and when we get back, we're going to find out more about this course program and the grant that's written for Indian River, Saint Indian River County. Pardon me. So we'll get back to you all. Thank you very much. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Okay, Simon, what do people wear? Clothes. That's right, so it's important to learn how to dress yourself. Here's how it's done. Shirt, underwear, pants, socks, shoes. Underwear, always first, name tag on the back. Then pants and shirt. Go ahead and put this on. Now with the shirt, you want to make sure the first button's right or you have to start all over again, okay? Socks left on left, right on right. Tying the shoes, we're going to take the laces, we're going to cross them over, we're going to turn around where the bunny goes down in the hole. Pull it tight and bunny ears, got it? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome back to Spotlight Indian River. I'm Gregory Simpson here, Mr. Wolfert, and we have our special guest today, Mr. Leroy Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, you said some very profound things as far as this course initiative. Mm -hmm. um, I think what makes it so special for me is that with what's going on around the United States, we see that individuals, see the law, law enforcement in particular, the sheriff, road deputies are not their friends. And it's such a unique approach to be able to have sheriffs that are from their communities coming back with a badge and saying that, hey, I'm now here as a service to the public and not someone who's here to just make sure that you get arrested or get tickets. So mm -hmm. uh, can you give me, is that more in line with the culture and idea of this course program? Is that what you're all trying to do? Well, I think I think so. You know, I, as here are my thoughts on it, because you just touched on something I think I was thinking about. In light of the events that have occurred around the nation, uh, I think it's very beneficial for our agency in the River County Sheriff's Department to uh, proactively pursue an effort mm -hmm. like this because law enforcement has been portrayed and is being portrayed as them against us. It's mm -hmm. very negative. Mm -hmm. This program promotes positivity. They, it, it provides an opportunity for certain segments of society to select an individual from that community. Bring forward that individual and we have agreed to Hire this, hire this individual if they meet the requirements and take that individual and put them right back in the community so that individual can provide the level of service that I think is expected like by the citizens yeah. from that particular segment of society. Yeah. So I think it's a very beneficial program. I think uh, it, I, I applaud the agency for pursuing this. This is something that I think is really needed. Hmm. And, and I, it's sort of like the uh, school district at one time in other parts of the country, they have what they call grow your own candidates. Grow your own, and what I mean by grow your own, someone in your neighborhood who you knew all your life, you watched him grow up as a kid, now he's 19 years old, and they're asking your organization, can you look out among your community and pick out an individual who you feel will represent you and treat you fairly? Say, yes, I want to pick Gregory Simpson. So they choose you. When you go for your training, you pass everything, and guess what? You come right back to that community. Now you have what? A relationship already built there. Yes. Uh, it's very important that we, we maintain relationship. Uh, I never forget, I, I say it over and over again because it was a great statement coming from Rosalind Smith, mm -hmm. one of our instructors in school. Ms. Smith. Ms. Smith. Yeah. And she told me one time, she said, Wolfhawk, rules without a relationship brings about a rebellion. I said, what you mean, Ms. Smith? She said, if you sit there and select someone, I'm just using this analogy mm -hmm. about the sheriff, you said, select someone to come to my community as a sheriff officer, but you never ask our community or anybody there, and you put that person there. We didn't want her. We didn't want him. Mm -hmm. We wanted them. So here, what you're doing is proactive. Exactly. You're including them in the process. Yes. They, they got the buy-in. Yes. So when, when June Bull come back now as the sheriff, everybody knows June Bull is so proud. So that's exactly what I think yeah. you're, you're going. Yeah. And it leaves a message to the, to the youth mm -hmm. that, I hey, that. you know, I, I can do that too. Yes. And I think that's, that's setting the way for future generations. I like it. That's absolutely wow. right. When you, see, when you see one that you grew up with become a law enforcement officer, mm, I could do that. I could do that. And yeah. I want to do that. And that's what we're trying to put out there. You're doing, doing a great job. We're going to take another break. 
And as we, we come back, we're going to do one more segment just to show you how important it is to build those relationships and keep things moving forward. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Welcome back. Uh, we're here to, with Leroy Smith, and he has given us some information that we didn't know. We thought we knew. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And there's many out there, too, so you're in the same boat that we are. <laughs> you thought you knew, too. But here is an opportunity for you to, uh, to learn more about this initiative, how being proactive is, is the key, how forming relationships is the key. And, and we have an opportunity here in Indian County, regardless of what anybody say, we have a great network stemming from the sheriff department from the health department uh school district all those pillar organizations that makes yes. a, a community uh, uh vibrant I, I don't know about you uh, if i was move if i were moving to another uh, community or town i don't know how is your law enforcement mm -hmm. how is your health health services how are your schools yeah. those are important things you know are very very important and how are you how are your churches in the community so those are pillar pillar things but I, I see what we have a sheriff that's being proactive already met the federal guidelines as far as hiring but want to do more it reminds me of a, a, a workshop I went to one time Leroy and a man asked me how many good people we have in here all our hand went up in the air just like this quick he said I figure all of you raise your hand he said but well, I'm looking for some good people and then some <laughs> mm. will do and then some yes, you'll do sir. what you should do but yes. and then and some then so, so yes. that's what we see here with your program right. you're doing some and then some right. we have met the federal guidelines but we're going to do some more because we're going to see more african-american female males hispanics and other minority races represented yes. anything as a wrap-up you know in, in, that you want to that we may have uh, left out no, I think we covered everything. It's just that I think that this program is a needed program. And like I said, I stated earlier, my hat is off to the agency for pursuing something like this because, like, I spent 29 years in this career, and we've only seen two black females in a patrol car in Indian River County, one law enforcement officer, and that was Doc Gordon. She, Gordon, she left and went to St. Lucie County. Mm -hmm. Cassandra Young drives a patrol car, but she's a civil service right. uh, processor for the agency. We're specifically looking for law enforcement officers, and I want to say to the, I can look at the mm -hmm. camera, yep. I want to mm -hmm. say to our community, if you're out there and you want a job in law enforcement and you are from the underrepresented class, I strongly urge you to fill out an application, bring it to the Indian River County Sheriff's Office, which is located at 4055 41st Avenue, and we will turn it in and we will uh, do our best to bring you on board. And if I may make a suggestion, uh, Mr. Smith, I will suggest going forward, and I don't know if you have or not, speak to some of our senior students in high school. Mm. You know, because we have these generation of kids who are not necessarily college attendees, mm -hmm. but they're looking for maybe vocational That's great, work great or some secondary opportunities. Mm -hmm. And before they can get into the lifestyle of maybe committing a crime or before they make a mistake that can jeopardize their future, I think that would be a good interception if you can speak to some of the seniors in the local high school in the area and let them know about this course program. I think that's a very good suggestion. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> we really, really enjoyed having this information brought forth to us, and uh, I, I just I just love when we have information that's going to put a positive twist on a negative situation. Because right now people say we don't have any black officers. Well, we're working on it. Yes. The ball is in the court of the community now. Apply. Go to some of these organizations and ask what do I need to do. Whether it's the Pastors Association, Cope, or any of those organizations you you met. Uh, mm -hmm. You met. We're gonna take a station break. And we're going to come back for our final segment after these words. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics in downtown Vero Beach. Owner Patty Callahan prints it all. From color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. 
We're back once again, and I tell you, I'm learning something that I didn't realize that, that uh, existed in the Indian River County Sheriff Department arena. And, and that's why this program is so important, that we do do spotlights on what's happening right in Indian River County, because many people don't know. We don't have any African-American uh, road patrolmen. Mm. There's a reason. Yes. And, and communication is the key. Once you ask the question, uh, then someone will come back with an answer. And I, and I really commend uh, the Indian River County Sheriff Department how they are part of the COPE initiative. Every third Monday in the month at 7 o'clock at the Gifford Community Center, there's a meeting called COPE, Community Oriented Police Enforcement. No, it's not all about policing, but it's a forum when the policeman, state attorney, code enforcement, any entity can come in and you can ask that question. And once you ask that question, you are able to get an answer. Now, you must be fair. Give the person who you're asking the question or the organization the opportunity to research and get back with you. That's why this question today about why there are not enough uh, law enforcement, uh, African-American women especially, uh, are men, are Hispanic. And we're having the answer coming right from the horse's mouth. Uh, and, and he's telling you exactly this is the reason why because we have more on the other side which is uh, correction okay yeah. all right so continue if you will just give us more insight about the these program this program okay uh, I uh, the qualifications to qualify first of all you have to be selected by a recognized group as stated early and those groups are the Community, the COPE program, mm -hmm. the Gifford Progressive Civic League, NAACP, the Pastoral Association, and the Gifford Youth Achievement Center right now, uh, they've all signed agreements. So once they pick that candidate and bring that candidate forward, that candidate is interviewed by a panel of uh, chosen by the sheriff would probably be the major of law enforcement, myself, and one other individual will set and interview this individual. And the, re the requirements are they must be at least 19 years of age, okay. I'll be a U.S. citizen, uh, reside in the community that they're, that they're selected from, uh, be a high school graduate, or receive an equivalent such as a GED, okay. and uh, uh, must not have been convicted of a felony or a misdemeanor involving perjury if you had were convicted for telling a lie, you can't be a law enforcement officer mm -hmm. because okay. your credibility is shot at that point in time. And if you were in the military, you know, and you got out of the military, if the individual that selected was in the military mm -hmm. and has since been released from the military, military must have a honorable discharge. Honorable discharge. Honorable discharge. Okay. okay, and that's just a bullet point of the requirements of the uh, candidate that's chosen by the selected group. You said something that caught my eye, and these list of things that that are, are requirements. You say must reside in the area in which they were selected. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is good because mm -hmm. I know I selected Leroy Smith, I know him, he'll represent me well. That is exactly the purpose, wow. Mr. Wolfhawk. You said that that's the reason for the grant, to have an individual that come from that community that is, that is aware of the culture that exists, that yes. is aware of the historical events that have gone on in that community. They, that individual is being chosen by the group to serve them, and I think that individual will serve them well. So that's the purpose of the program. Well, we thank I, you I, so much for coming on because this is great information. We are going to have to wrap up uh, this session, uh, but I, I just feel that the information that you gave is very important and then give these opportunities for our young people 19 and on up mm -hmm. to pursue them. Do you have a phone number? Uh, at work? Uh -huh. Yes, my phone number is 772-978-6197. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you can't reach me at that number, you can also dial the, the main number, which is 772 Nine, nine, six, six to seven hundred. Thank you. I, Five, six, I, nine, I know six, it too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we have some great information. We, we're going to have to cut down, but we will bring back another guest to put a spotlight in the river on our next episode. Tune in. See ya. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email Buzz TV Network at gmail.com or call 772 777 1382.